back to Inside the Box. I'm your host, Joanna Lee, and today we are launching a brand new series as a countdown to Canada Day. Let's talk about today's guest. She was featured on the cover of Richmond Review's 30 Under 30 in 2013. HuffPost hailed her debut record as stunning from start to finish. I'm pleased to introduce to you Canadian singer-songwriter, Mei Chung. Hi. Hey, May. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. So let's talk about your origin story and how you got into music. So I started playing piano at around seven years old. I started on a piece of paper. Um, we didn't have a keyboard, so I practiced on that. I've been a musician for 20 years now. Um, and you know, I, you know, I did the whole RCM piano conservatory type thing, did the exams. Uh, I played clarinet in elementary school, bass clarinet, uh, but ultimately something that really pulled me in was singing. And that has been my first love for as long as I can remember. Um, when I was about 13, I pulled my choir teacher aside and I, um, I asked him what he thought about my voice and he was impressed. I sang Killing Me Softly um, and it was, yeah, the beginning of a very long, you know, journey. Speaking of Killing Me Softly, I remember so well that moment where you sang that at our frosh when we were doing karaoke. It was mm -hmm. stunning, by the way. I really appreciated your voice back then, and I still do now. What made you decide to go into jazz at McGill? Well, after I sang to my choir teacher, we started doing gigs together. I uh, played at this McDonald's in Surrey for their opening. Um, and it was really fun. I eventually did, you know, shows for YWCA. I formed my own quartet after being accepted into the BCMEA's Honor Jazz Vocal Choir. And there I met my friend, Lindsay, Lindsay Leong, who uh, plays she plays jazz piano, but she she's now actually a registered massage therapist. She's awesome. If you're in BC, check her out, Lindsay Leong. Um, and uh, so yeah, she and I formed a quartet. We performed all across the Lower Mainland. We gigged together, made money, and finally, um, there came a time where I had to think about university. Mm -hmm. And so I, I auditioned at McGill, Concordia, and um, Capilano College. I got accepted into all three. And my heart was set on McGill because it had a reputation of being one of the best music schools in Canada uh, for jazz. Uh, McGill also just seemed such a, seemed to, to have a great, environment yeah. being in Montreal which hosts the Montreal Jazz Festival every summer and I think the allure for me was also the fact that Montreal was bilingual oh yeah I had a I had a bit of a I was just so enamored by the French language which I studied throughout high school mm -hmm. so yeah those three things were the main points, main driving points for me. Amazing. Weren't you one of the few Asian Canadians that were in voice performance in jazz? Yes, I don't have a clear answer, you know, from McGill. I think I asked my teacher once about that and she said there was one other Asian, probably in the early 90s, that graduated from McGill from the jazz program. Um, but in terms of, like in recent history, I don't think so. So 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, there were definitely other Asians in the jazz program, yes. uh, like Dennis Chang, um, who's an amazing gypsy guitarist, gypsy, gypsy jazz guitarist. Um, and uh, there were other few, you know, Asians, but mostly me. It felt, it felt, it felt like it was just me. <laughs> As a first generation Asian Canadian, how would you describe your experiences and your identity? I've definitely been faced with a lot of skepticism, criticism, and racism. Um, it hasn't been an easy journey, but I've been met with co uh, comments like, I never knew a Chinese person could ever sing like that, or you should change your last name because it's really hard to pronounce. And it's simply not true. You have so many other artists out there that have kept to their names and people remember how to pronounce their last names. Like it's not, it's not an issue. If you're good at what you do, you're just good at what you do. So I've chosen to stay authentic uh, with myself and it helps that my producer, Nir Felder, uh, really encouraged me to stick with my name. And so that is, that, that's what it's always been for me. I do have other aliases, but I just, for, for this project at least, for my own singer-songwriter project, I just want to keep to my name. Wow, that's amazing. I think you did right by your by sticking to your name and sticking to your identity. It's very authentic and I have tremendous respect for that. What would you advise like-minded young Asian Canadian artists who are in the same boat as you are? Well, I would say that you should be patient, persistent, and that you should persevere. It's not an easy, industry to navigate, first of all, as a woman in a very male dominant industry, and secondly, as a visible minority or a person of color, because you have a lot of um, prejudices that you're dealing with. People have their own, um, have their own sort of conclusions about what people sound like without ever hearing them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not, it's not cool, but it's your mission to prove these people wrong and it's to prove and, and it's to just do what you love to do and not have anyone tell you that you're not good enough or that um, you can't do this thing that you love. Uh, I feel very privileged that my parents have supported me throughout this whole journey. Um, they've never, ever, ever doubted me. They've always been super encouraging for an Asian Canadian, I mean, we all know how that is, right? Like, parents want results. I mean, it's not only Chinese or Asian parents. It's like, it's 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 all parents. I'm sure they want the best for their kids. But I think that, uh, like my my dad, for example, has had customers come up to him and and, and ask him, like, why would you let your daughter? play music and let her study music and it's not and it's sort of like this uh, I think it just tells it's so telling of our culture as Asians that we are not allowed to do certain things we're not allowed to pursue certain things in real life and that's just, that's just so wrong I feel like um, it's not about us it's about our parents if we do things that they want us to do so you know my me having parents that were super kind of just like hippies <laughs> about my my career it's not like they didn't care i've had the pressure for sure we've had fights and all this stuff but you know at the end of the day they they were the ones that paid for my tuition they were the ones that bought my first mic they were the ones that first bought, bought my first like mic stand and all the stuff. So, you know, I can't deny that they they have like really really supported me. They were the ones that drove me to all those rehearsals and BCMEA, you know, uh, performances and rehearsals all the way out in like Surrey White Rock, you know, 
yeah, they were the ones that did that for me. So I, there's no denying that my parents really, you know, really saw the, the potential in me. Um, so I would say, I would say, you know, just keep going. Never, ever, ever, ever give up. Like, it's just not even a question. Re regardless of what your parents think, I think you, you should always follow your heart. So that's what I would say. Well said. Thank you for sharing. What would you say to your parents today? Well, that I love them. That, um, yeah, they, they still actually just want me to keep performing and still playing music. Um, you know, for me, I personally have my own wants for the future. Like, you know, I want to have a house eventually. I want to be financially stable and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm making a living. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable, you know, teaching piano to little kids and all that stuff. But, um, yeah. And I, I if, if my parents were here, I'd say that I love them and, that, and, and thank you for, for letting me be myself. Beautiful. Speaking of projects, what projects are you currently working on? I have about five projects on the run right now. Um, yeah, I have my own projects, uh, which, which include writing music um, for the next record that I want to put out, um, sketching ideas, all that stuff. I've had the opportunity of playing with a lot of amazing musicians in New York and LA. Um, and my next project is probably, let's see, well, there's one called Scorpion Mouse, which has um, my partner and I, we are a duo, and I sing my lush vocals on top with a, uh, a pedal that filters my voice into different presets, and my partner creates gen generative code that um, generates music and visuals that syncs up with my voice and the beats and harmonies and all that stuff. And together we're called Scorpion Mouse. We've performed at South by Southwest. We've performed in Hong Kong, LA, New York, Mexico, um, uh, Barcelona, Madrid. So a bunch of places and we're still, you know, trying to release more material as we go along. We have one single up on Spotify, go check it out. It's called Goddess of Fate. Um, I have another project called Dove's Peak, which is R&B soul project with my friend Russell Cranes. Uh, another singer songwriter project with my friend Drew Yole, who was a VJ at MTV. And we have toured together, we perform together a bunch, we write together. Um, and that's always a good time. And there's a couple of other projects in the back burner right now. I do get commissioned to do background vocals for people. So if you're ever looking for background vocals, hit me up. Great. We'll keep you in mind for that if I need that. Yeah. Let's talk about your online project on Facebook. Yes. Uh, it's called When's Maze coined by my friend Kristen Fung, whom y'all should check out. She's amazing. Another uh, guest jazz vocalist, R&B soul singer from Vancouver originally, uh, went up east to study just like myself. And she's awesome. She coined this term Wednesdays. I did my birthday show on a Wednesday and so it stuck so every Wednesday um, on Facebook Live on my artist page, and you'll you can check it out in the link below. Um, you can tune in at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be there. I'll take your requests, and I have my own covers that I do. I play my own original music. So yeah, check it out, guys. You really must check it out. She is amazing and she will do her best to accommodate your request, even if it's just some random song that she's probably never sung before. Go and yep. join her on Wednesdays. Yep, you got that right. There are definitely so many songs I've never even heard of before. 
and I just go and do them and it's like really cool. It's a great experience to kind of be in the song. You know, you can listen to a lot of songs and it can just kind of pass you by. But when you start learning these songs and you're sitting down and you're spending time with them, you really get into the song and it's really cool. So, yeah. And she even asked the audience to participate in her last episode. So it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Anyways, I would like to conclude with my last question. How would you celebrate Canada Day? Well, like a lot of Canadians, I would probably put my grill on <laughs> and grill some food and reflect on how amazing it is to be in this amazing country when things are so tumultuous in the U.S. right now and around the world. Um, I mean, being in Canada doesn't exclude you from the coronavirus, but it it's just definitely a country that I'm proud to be born in and to be from, to have citizenship uh, from. So I think about the social advantages of being Canadian. Without, without being Canadian, I wouldn't have received a, a Canada Council grant to go down and study in New York in 2009. I wouldn't have had a factor grant. Um, I wouldn't have had the support of um, so many fellow Canadian musicians. So I, I feel so proud to be uh, from this country. Well said. Thank you so much for sharing and for coming on my show today. It is so great to see you again. Yeah, great to see you too. Yeah. Thanks for asking me to, to be a part of your show. It's awesome. I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> for everyone else, thank you for joining us. We do have a special clip of me performing for you after this. Please enjoy. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, take care. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, so for Canada Day, I'll be doing Joni Mitchell's A Case of You. Oh,
the stargazer from my baby record, The Departure. See the stars dance at night as the sun takes its flight. They wait for the curtain call. How many wishes do we keep while we all fall asleep? Is he out there somewhere? Is my heart the one he bears? My star. The gods align us before we turn to dust. Will we meet in the world of dreams? Is he out there somewhere? Is my heart the one he bears? My star.